everybody 3D prints. I'm Ray Shane and today I'm going to do a short video on the installation of the automatic bed leveling system for the Atom Lab Gantry printer. This system was developed by Everybody 3D Prints and is the recommended uh, method of auto bed leveling uh, by the manufacturer. So the bed leveling system consists of a number of parts. The main part is this replacement 3D printed extruder cover, which provides a mounting point for a capacitive sensor, for a 5015 uh, radial fan, which blows down through a riser and then out through a ring vent. Your nozzle would be sitting here and it blows straight down, so it doesn't cool the nozzle at all, it simply cools the part around the nozzle. The fan has a cable that runs through a port here that will connect to the PWM socket on the extruder uh, PC board and the um, sensor has a cable here that will run through the drag chain along with the extruder cable. The cable from the sensor runs to a proprietary voltage regulator module, which then has a cable coming out and running to the white PCB board in the black box um, controller unit. We also supply, as part of the kit, a replacement extruder vent for the extruder fan. The original vent is somewhat longer and has two openings, one for the extruder and the other to cool the part, which you obviously no longer need. So you're only going to have the one extruder opening, which will make it a more efficient cooling solution for the extruder and cause less clogging. Finally, we supply a replacement mounting plate for the Z-axis end stop switch. And the reason we do that is because we recommend that you lower the bed all the way down on its springs and come back up maybe two turns just for room to, uh, to adjust. But the lower the bed is, the tighter the springs are and the less likely the knobs holding the bed in place are going to vibrate loose and change the geometry of your machine on you. So we're going to move all of this to one side commence the uh, installation. We're going to disconnect the plug from the voltage module. And the first thing that you have to do is pull off the old extruder cover, which is held on by four screws. Sorry about that background noise. Four screws, um, two on each side. This one happens to only have three, but most will have four. Oh, I forgot she was that too. You take the cover off. This is your extruder PCB, printed circuit board. And you've got three connectors on the one side. This front connector is for the thermistor. This blue connector is for the heating cartridge. This four pin connector is for the extruder motor. This back connector is for the um, extruder cable. On this side of the three, the front connector is for the extruder fan. It's a straight. Um, analog connector. The middle connector is for the LEDs, but the manufacturer chose to put the LEDs in the back connector, which is actually the only uh, PWM socket that allows uh, control of the item connected. So we're going to take the LED socket out, or the LED plug out of that socket, and we're going to move it forward one and you're going to lose control over the LED. Right? It's going to go on and off with the power of the, to the machine. 
but it's the only way to get control of your cooling fan, which is the optimum uh, configuration. Now before we put the replacement cover on, we need to unscrew these two screws on the mount for the end of the drag chain. And they're just regular nuts and bolts, M3, uh, probably 8 millimeter. And the reason we're doing this is because we want to run the, the cable from the sensor through this drag, drag chain so as to keep it out of the way of your prints and does not have something else hanging around on you. So you take these two out, make sure you don't lose the nuts and bolts, and you can lay this pretty much flat. You can feed cable back from the extruder cable to facilitate that. What you'd like to do ideally is to have a piece of stiff piano wire available. I know a lot of people don't even know what pianos are anymore, but this is the wire they use to make the sounds. And it happens to be excellent wire to pull uh, other wires through because it's stiff and it's easily bent and it's very, very strong. We're going to open up enough of these loops to allow me to get from the motor side of the drag chain to the extruder side because we're going to want to pull the cable back from the extruder side so that both cables, the extruder cable and the sensor cable, are coming out the same side, side of the drag chain and going to your controller box, which is where the uh, sensor cable does end up. I'm simply going to feed as smoothly as I can the piano wire through the drag chain until it comes out the other side. And then I'm going to take the plug end of the cable coming off of the capacitive sensor. And in order to avoid causing cable damage, I'm going to put it behind the connector. I'm going to wrap it one and a half full times around the connector so that I have the open end on one side of the connector and the wire on the other, and then I'm going to twist it. And this way, when it pulls, it's going to pull both on the connector and on the wires and not pull the connector off the wires or pull the wires out of the connector. Then we're going to feed it back in. We have to play with it a bit to get it all the way through. I have to bend it a little flatter. That. You basically want to get a straight pull through. sliding off the side of the connector and allowing it to turn sideways and get caught in the slots of the drag chain, which is, makes this very difficult. But you do it right and it comes through rather easy. We're going to unwire this. going to feed it through and leave a little bit of slack at this end. You don't need a lot. And before we put this on, we're going to need to disassemble the extruder. So before we install the replacement cover, 
we want to take out this extruder fan vent um, and put in the new one that we have that doesn't blow on the part. So in order to do that, we're going to turn the machine on. We're going to go to um, prepare and then move axis. And then we're going to raise the Z by tens and give ourselves some room to get a screwdriver under there. And of course you can start it way up, I just didn't. So while that's raising, I can actually start reinstalling the drag chain uh, anchor. And we want to pull back some of the extra slack that we created. Now one thing, if you haven't done it already, um, the manufacturer takes the extruder cable and runs it out of the drag chain and directly into the extruder. That causes a lot of metal fatigue or wire fatigue on the extruder cable. So if instead you run it the other way towards the back of the machine and then around into the extruder, you're creating a loop which gives it flexibility and, and eliminates the tendency of the wire to break in that right angle turn that the manufacturer puts in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the nuts that I took off before and I'm going to put it on my fingertip and I'm going to hold it underneath the hole and then stick the screw back in. Lining everything up as well as I can. I'm going to tighten it by hand until I get it caught. And then I can tighten it with this or with the electric screwdriver, whatever happens to be handy. One back. And we'll do the same thing with the second nut. If you just look straight down through the hole, you can actually see when you're pretty much lined up. flat enough against the metal for the screw or bolt more properly to grab it. So now I've got the drag chain wire through and I've got the probe wire through. Now what I want to do is take off the two screws that hold the, the extruder to the mounting plate. And it's a good time taking off when you take off the extruder from the mounting plate to tighten the rollers. There are three rollers that hold this X along this extruder, extrusion. And those rollers tend to come loose from the factory. Um, and while you have the extruder off, you can disconnect the extruder uh, wire and you disconnect the um, LED wire and you can literally remove the entire extruder in one piece. And when you do that, you've got these three mounting bolts exposed, um, and you can loosen them, push the rollers into the extrusion, and then retighten the three bolts, and you'll get a little less vertical play. Now what I'm going to do, I'm not taking the extruder off entirely. I'm going to remove the two screws, cut the fan off first because I've broken many a fan blade doing this. I'm going to remove the two screws that hold the extruder together. Um, So 
So that's one screw. And this is done using a uh, metric hex <laughs> cake. And there are just two of them that hold the whole unit together. So you remove these two screws, very long, I think they're 35, 40 millimeter screws, and they go through the uh, fan and the extruder vent and the extruder itself, or actually the coal block underneath the extruder, and into the motor, which is where they fasten. So you want to remove these far enough so that you can pull the fan off and then you can remove the vent. And this hole accommodates the, the shaft of the motor, so you've got to be able to move it this way a bit. And these two are basically the same item, but one is shorter. Mine has only one hole and theirs has two holes. And I replace this with the closed side toward the extruder and the open side toward the fan. I'm going to try to get everything lined up and screw it all back together again. Tighten them all the way down yet. You snug them. Because there's one very important step you need to remember to do whenever you take the extruder apart. This extruder is made up of a number of discrete pieces that all have to line up well if you're going to uh, have a decent filament here. And the way you line them up well is by taking the included uh, filament alignment tool or extruder alignment tool and pushing it down into the extruder. Now if you look, I'm getting it way down to the nozzle. And that way, that's about the thickness of a piece of filament and you know that your path is clear so that when you want to feed filament through, you're not fighting with a piece of the extruder happen happening to hang over because it's slightly misaligned. So now I'm tightening these, and I'm still not going to really jam them down because you are working metal to plastic, so you don't want to break anything, you don't want to warp anything. But you get them nice and snug, and then you check, and you see? That's not good. So what I'm going to do, I don't know if you saw it stop or heard the clicking, but I've got a slight misalignment. So I'm going to unscrew this just a bit and give it some, slat, some loose area. And I'm just going to jam this around a few times. And that will realign the cold block. And now it's sliding through freely. So I'm going to tighten these down a bit again should be good. And that's where a lot of people are having trouble with this machine. They take the filament uh, path apart in order to clear a clog, and they don't use the tool to do this. You should put a little pressure on here, and the tool should basically just slide right through with no blockages like that. Then you take the screws and you mount the uh, extruder back. You want to make these fairly tight. You don't want your extruder moving around on you. So very simply, I feed it through one side and pull it through the other. You want to get this over the nozzle and over the little lever here. And before you actually engage it, 
you want to take the uh, fan connector and plug it in to that PWM socket. Make sure everything lines up. backwards here and try to let the camera have a good angle. Unfortunately, it doesn't give me a good angle to work at. Okay, then we're going to screw these in and get on to the next step. Okay, um, sorry about that. The battery on the camera ran out, so we lost a couple of seconds of footage, but uh, we have the two screws that I have in here. There's obviously two more screws available. Yeah, some of you might be noting this is a pretty ratty looking cover. Uh, they don't all come like this, but this is actually one of the rejects. I don't see any reason not to use it. So that's the reason for that. So you've got your sensor here. You've got your extruder cable here coming out through the drag, drag chain. Your extruder ch cable obviously connects here, but we're going to also want to connect the sensor. The way you connect the sensor is by plugging it into the end of the voltage regulator module to which you will have another cable plugged or a dual cable plug. The red and blue are power, the yellow and brown are uh, signal, and it's going to plug into the whiteboard. Now I've already opened this box, so I can flip this over and show you. Um, you thread this cable through the same hole in the back of the box that all the other cables are coming through. Plenty of room. And you just, let's see if I can give you a good video of it. So this is the fan that comes mounted on the whiteboard. Right next to the fan, there is another uh, unregulated socket, meaning it's, it's a regular analog socket, not a PWM, pulse width modulation socket. So that's where you plug in the power. The power feeds to the probe 24 volts. The probe can take anywhere from 6 to 36 volts. The reason you do this is because you have two buses on the board, on any Arduino board. You've got a high power bus, which in this case is 24 volts, could also be 12 on other machines. And you've got a low power bus for sensors and the LCD and the, the uh, CPU. So you don't want 24 volts or 12 volts feeding back to those low power items. That's only 5 volts. And the, the uh, voltage regulator module takes the 24 volt signal and reduces it to 5 volts. So the voltage, uh, the, the signal pin gets plugged into the filament runout port two, which is right back here next to the ribbon cable. Obviously, I'm doing, the, I'm doing an upgrade on the single ribbon cable LCD with the white board. They have a black board on the early machines. The, the system will work the same, but when you order, you have to tell me it's a black board um, so that I can wire it properly because the wiring is slightly different. And on that board, you have minimum and maximum end stop connectors. So we use one of the um, maximum end stop connectors which are unused on this design printer for the signal. But on this one we use the filament runout sensor too. Then you can just put the board back and reconnect the extruder cable. And there you have it. If you want to see at least a, an initial test of whether or not this is working, uh, you can turn the machine on. In my case, the probe lights up because I have a normally closed probe. I think it's normally closed. Yes, NC, normally closed. So when you have a normally closed probe, the probe is in a closed position. Uh, you can also get them normally open, in which case that light wouldn't be on. When I approach with my hand, 
the light goes off. When it senses my hand, it opens because it's normally closed. When you have a normally open probe, the light would be off, and when your hand approached, the light would go on. And it's basically the same thing. You just have to set a flag differently in Marlin to accommodate the, the difference in operation. So that's the sum total of installation. Um, I provide the mounting plate, which is already on here, um, because, as I said, we want to lower the bed, but that's pretty self-evident on how to replace one with the other. So that's it for this video, and um, there will be a follow-up video very shortly, either from myself uh, or from uh, Nate on the forum as to the operation of the um, leveling system, how to, how to set it up the first time, how to do your first mesh, um, how to set your print height, and exactly what benefits you get from it. So until then, thank you very much for viewing the, uh, the video. If you have any questions, feel free to PM me. Enjoy printing. Have a great day.